keep people off balance and in the dark by never revealing the purpose behind your actions. If they have no clue what you are up to, they cannot prepare a defense. Guide them far enough down the rang path, envelop them in enough smoke, and by the time they realize your intentions, it will be too late. Most people are open books. They say what they feel, blurt out their opinions at every opportunity, and constantly reveal their plans and intentions. They do this for several reasons. First, it is easy and natural to always want to talk about one's feelings and plans for the future. It takes effort to control your tongue and monitor what you reveal. Second, many believe that by being honest and open, they are winning people's hearts and showing their good nature. They are greatly deluded. Honesty is actually a blunt instrument, which bloodies more than it cuts. Your honesty is likely to offend people, it is much more prudent to tailor your words, telling people what they want to hear rather than the coarse and ugly truth of what you feel or think. More important, by being unabashedly open you make yourself so predictable and familiar that it is almost impossible to respect or fear you, and power will not accrue to a person who cannot inspire such emotions. If you yearn for power, quickly lay honesty aside, and train yourself in the art of concealing your intentions. Master the art and you will always have the upper hand. Basic to an ability to conceal one's intentions is a simple truth about human nature, our first instinct is to always trust appearances. We cannot go around doubting the reality of what we see and hear constantly imagining that appearances concealed something else would exhaust and terrify us. This fact makes it relatively easy to conceal one's intentions. Simply dangle an object you seem to desire, a goal you seem to aim for, in front of people's eyes, and they will take the appearance for reality. Once their eyes focus on the decoy, they will fail to notice what you are really up to. In seduction, set up conflicting signal, such as desire and indifference, and you not only throw them off the scent, you inflame their desire to possess you. A tactic that is often effective in setting up a red herring is to appear to support an idea or cause that is actually contrary to your own sentiments. Bismarck used this to great effect in his speech in 1850. Most people will believe you have experienced a change of heart, since it is so unusual to play so lightly with something as emotional as one's opinions and values. The same applies for any decoyed object of desire, seem to want something in which you are actually not at all interested and your enemies will be thrown off the scent, making all kinds of errors in their calculations. During the War of the Spanish Succession in 1711, the Duke of Marlborough, head of the English army, wanted to destroy a key French fort because it protected a vital thoroughfare into France. Yet he knew that if he destroyed it, the French would realize what he wanted to advance down that road. Instead, then, he merely captured the fort and garrisoned it with some of his troops, making it appear as if he wanted it for some purpose of his own. The French attacked the fort and the Duke let them recapture it. Once they had it back, though, they destroyed it, figuring that the Duke had wanted it for some important reason. Now that the fort was gone, the road was unprotected, and Marlborough could easily march into France. Use this tactic in the following manner, hide your intentions not by closing up, with the risk of appearing secretive, and making people suspicious, but by talking endlessly about your desires and goals just not your real ones. You will kill three birds with one stone, you appear friendly, open, and trusting, you conceal your intentions, and you send your rivals on time-consuming wild goose chases. Another powerful tool in throwing people off the scent is false sincerity. People easily mistake sincerity for honesty. Remember their first instinct is to trust appearances, and since they value honesty and want to believe in the honesty of those around them, they will rarely doubt you or see through your act. Seeming to believe what you say gives your words great weight. This is how ego deceived and destroyed Othello, given the depth of his emotions. The apparent sincerity of his concerns about Desdemona supposed infidelity, how could Othello distrust him? This is also how the great con artist Yellow Kid Vile pulled the wool over Sucker's eyes, seeming to believe so deeply in the decoyed object he was dangling in front of them, a phony stock, a touted racehorse, he made its reality hard to doubt. It is important, of course, not to go too far in this area. Sincerity is a tricky tool, appear over-passionate and you raise suspicions. Be measured and believable or your ruse will seem the put on that it is. To make your false sincerity an effective weapon in concealing your intentions, espouse a belief in honesty and forthrightness as important social values. 
do this as publicly as possible. Emphasize your position on this subject by occasionally divulging some heartfelt thought though only one that is actually meaningless or irrelevant, of course. Napoleon's minister Talleyrand was a master at taking people into his confidence by revealing some apparent secret. This feigned confidence a decoy would then elicit a real confidence on the other person's part. Remember, the best deceivers do everything they can to cloak their roguish qualities. They cultivate an air of honesty in one area to disguise their dishonesty in others. Honesty is merely another decoy in their arsenal of weapons, 